you're down. Can't do it. Good morning, everyone. It's 1015. This is the second Sunday in August. It's Sunday, August the 9th. And as we begin our preparation this morning, our first selection is a, a great piece. Uh, took me back in time. It's a salute to the joy strings. Um, and it's performed by the International Staff Band and Songsters. Uh, so um, do a little bit of tri time travel this morning as you listen to this salute to the joy strings. Jesus 
I thought, but I guess I didn't hit the button. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome. And as we continue this morning in our preparation for worship, we have a piece, Glory to His Name, performed by Philip Smith and the New York Staff Band. Again, we want to welcome you. Please enjoy this Glory to His Name. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. We're going to begin our worship in just a moment, uh, but we're going to continue our time of preparation. And as we do, I'd like for you to listen to the piece Amazing Grace performed this morning by the Brisbane City Temple Band. Amazing Grace. Major Linda and I are glad to be with you on Facebook Live today. Thank you for meeting here today for church. If this is your first experience with the Salvation Army of Citrus County, I'm Major Ken Fagan. I am the Corps Officer Pastor. And with me is my wife, Major Linda, and together we pastor the Salvation Army in Citrus County. A lot of things are happening in August. Um, Teachers and children are going to be returning to school soon um, here in Citrus County. Um, parents have the choice that they can either um, send their children back to school for the in the classroom experience, or um, they can uh, the, their children can attend virtual school. Um, believe classes start here August the twentieth. Uh, so we'll be wanting to remember um, the parents and the teachers and the kids um, as they transition back to school. Um, continue to pray for my mother-in-law, Faye Penhale. Uh, she's had a good day, a good week this past week. Uh, has shown some improvement, and we're happy about that. Um, Supposedly, she's on. I guess her. Um 
Mia must have got her on, or whoever the worker was today oh. must have got her on. So she's on here, I think. Okay. I, have, well, I haven't seen her, but I was told she was on. Okay, well, good. Uh, Faye, if you're listening, we're glad you're worshiping with us today uh, from your room at the rehab center. And uh, as I said, she's had a good week la last week, and we're praying for more good weeks for her uh, up until that time when she would be able to come home, if that's the Lord's will. But uh, pray for Faye and pray for those who are ministering to her um, in these days. Um, you know, right, I, I think it would be uh, appropriate for us to pause right now and to go to God and place all of these things into his hands and um, to thank him for answered prayer, to ask for his blessing on our time together today and for his guidance in the days ahead. So uh, let's just join together in prayer and you bow with me as we pray. Father, we ask that you help us to develop a trust and faith in you that reflects the simplicity of childlike faith, that faith that uh, causes your heart to rejoice, that faith that is so evident in the lives of little children. And yet, sometimes, Lord, it seems to evaporate as soon as we reach the age of maturity. I pray, Lord, that we would develop a wonder and an amazement at the glorious redemption story and a deep humility as we approach your holy throne of grace to ask for help in our time of need. Lord, forgive us for losing so much of the wonder of the birth and for becoming complacent about the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Renew in us a deep reverence for your holy name, a reverence that is so fitting of our great and glorious God, God, a God who has loved us so much that you gave your only son to die for our sins, so that whosoever believes, whosoever believes, wouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, help us in the days that lie ahead to examine our hearts, and to see if we've become lukewarm towards the things of God. Renew in us a childlike spirit of awe and wonder, so that um, once again we'll marvel at the wonder of who you truly are, and draw us closer into a deeper intimacy with you. Lord, I thank you for our great nation, the United States of America. I thank you, Lord, that it was founded on your word and faith in you alone. And I thank you that, that our nation is blessed because of this foundation. And Lord, I, it's my desire that we would continue to live under um, the, your blessings as we are obedient to you. Father, breathe a fresh wind of unity over our nation. Let your Holy Spirit dominate every area of our government, our schools, our churches, and our homes. Help us as believers to to walk in love and unity together so that everyone can see that we are one and that and and they'll know the power of the one true living God. Lord, we continue to pray for Faye, be with her and be with the medical staff who who care for her in rehab. Lord, be her companion in her times of loneliness. Be her comfort and peace in times of confusion and stress. 
We, Lord, we pray for Jack and Art and Linda and Joyce, and, and we pray, Lord, that they would have an assurance, a peace of knowing that your plan and your timing is perfect. Lord, we continue to pray for Esther, and we thank you for the progress that she's making in her recovery. And Lord, you alone are aware of what needs to happen for her healing to continue, and, and we wait on you for you to work in her healing. Lord, we pray for Danny, and we ask that you continue to give him strength for every day. Continue your healing and bless their relationship, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the good news that, that Sally received this week from her doctors. Uh, we And Lord, we just pray that you would continue to be with her in her recovery uh, from her surgery. Lord, we thank you for the traveling safety of the Peters family. Thank you for their safe arrival um, back here in Citrus County. And Lord, we, we pray for Stan and Debbie Carr this week as they travel back to, to Texas. Watch over them, Lord, as they return to their responsibilities. Lord, we, we pray for the Johnson family this morning. We pray for Alan and Melinda and pray that you would be especially close to them. Um, be their comfort, Lord. Be their peace in this time of uh, of mourning and distress and lord we we place them in your hands father we ask for your continued comfort for those who have been infected by the coronavirus be with the the medical team the doctors the nurses those who minister to them every day keep them safe lord lord we thank you for your faithfulness and how you've guided, equipped, and provided for us. And we ask that you continue to lead us and to be our comfort and peace. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. You know, last Thursday in our bag lunch Bible study, we talked about the importance of of faithfulness um, we heard it um, uh, when uh, in the salute to the joy strings and they're talking about how we need to be faithful to God his love never fails um, Eliza Hewitt when she wrote when we all get to get to heaven I believe it's song number 676 in our song book um, in the second verse she said let us then be true and faithful. And she goes on in the third verse to say that our reward for being faithful is that we'll walk the streets of gold. And all of this because of the endless love of God. And that's something to sing about. And so we're going to sing that song this morning. The Pendleton Core Band will provide a short introduction before we sing When We All Get to Heaven.
I hope that you will uh, join us here on Facebook Live this Thursday at noon for our Bag Lunch Bible Study. Uh, we have been uh, looking at the parables of this of of Jesus, and this week we're going to be looking at Luke chapter ten, verses twenty five to thirty seven, and Jesus will share with us the parable of the Good Samaritan. Um, I hope that you will like and follow the Salvation Army Citrus County Facebook page. Uh, that way, uh, when you both like and follow, you'll get notifications if you've turned on your notifications on Facebook whenever we go live. Um, Major Linda and I will be doing our um, Friday visits with our Citrus County Corps members this Friday. Uh, we'll be bringing, of course, the church in an envelope as we enjoy our social distance visit with you and we're able to catch up on what's happened in the last week. And as always, we're happy to receive your tithes and world services offering um, on uh, Friday. And we thank you for your faithfulness uh, in supporting the Corps. Um, you know, there have been um, several folks who have asked us about having um, our services on um, YouTube. And uh, they, because for whatever reason, they either they don't have a Facebook account or a um, host of other reasons. So we have created a the Salvation Army Citrus County Corps uh, YouTube channel. So if you're watching from YouTube, welcome. Yeah. Can you please do the same. Yeah. Well, no, we're not live. We're not no. live on YouTube. No, but they still need to like yes. and follow it. Yes. When you go to YouTube, YouTube um, you can, in the search bar, type the Salvation Army Citrus County. And um, our YouTube channel will pop up and you will see all of our postings. Um, for all of our online services and our Bible studies. And within five minutes of the end of this service today, um, this service will be on our YouTube channel. So uh, we hope that you'll share that good news with those folks um, that uh, you know. Today, um, the scripture portion that we'll be looking at is Romans chapter 10. And it's the first 13 verses, verses 1 through 13. Uh, I invite you to follow along in your Bible. And I'm going to be reading uh, the scripture passage this morning from the NIV. Uh, again, the passage is Romans 10, verses 1 to 13. And the, today... The scripture will not be on your screen or monitor. We're not putting it on the screen or monitor today. So uh, if you'd like to see the words, you'll need to grab your Bible real quick. I'll give you another 30 seconds to grab your Bible because I know you got it handy. How can we live a day without the word of God? Today, we're looking at Romans chapter 10 and the first 13 verses. And again, I'm reading from the New International Version. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal isn't based on knowledge. Since they didn't know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they didn't submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Don't say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is, 
to bring Christ up from the dead. But what it does say, the word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. And may he bless the hearers and doers of his word. Before I share from God's word this morning, I want us to sing together, My Jesus, I Love Thee. It's song number 878 in the songbook. And this is going to be a bit different than how we have sung any of the songs that we've done in our online services. I think you'll find it unique and going, wow, that was very cool. Um, there will be a short introduction by the Wellington City Corps Band, and the words will appear on the bottom of your screen. My Jesus, I love thee. That was different, wasn't it? I enjoyed that. I hope you did too. Um, in Hamlet, Act 3 and Scene 2, Hamlet says to Horatio, Give me that man 
is, that is not passion's slave. And I will wear him in my heart's core. I, in my heart of heart, as I do thee. Now, please don't think that I am a, uh, a scholar or knowledgeable of, of Shakespeare. I did have to read Hamlet um, in high school, in English, in college, but uh, and remembered this line. Like the heart of an artichoke, the heart of Hamlet's heart is its tender part. He reserves part of his affection for those who aren't slaves to their passion, who are governed by reason, like his friend Horatio. Heart. Hamlet talks about the heart. As we read our scripture passage this morning, Paul talked about the heart and the role of the heart in our salvation. Heart in the Bible is a comprehensive term for the authentic person. That part of ourselves where we desire, where we meditate, where we decide. And we often refer to this as our innermost being. Heart is also an inclusive term, and we use that word heart to describe the beginning and depth of our feelings, our desires, our passions, our thoughts, our, our understanding, our will. For example, if someone says, I have you in my heart, what are they saying? Well, what they're saying is, is that they have strong feelings of affection for you. If someone says, oh, that touches my heart, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that what they're saying is, um, I was moved by what I just saw, or I was moved by what I just heard. That touched my heart. When we sing the words, in my heart there rings a melody of love. What we're saying is the song in our heart is God's love and mercy for us. The sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross to atone for our sins. We firmly believe that salvation by grace through faith is a matter of the heart, of our intellect, our understanding, our will. It's our desire to be saved. You know, this happened to me this past week when, when my mind was wrapped up thinking and praying um, through the sermon for this morning. I think it would be good if we would ask ourselves two questions. What makes me tick? What motivates me to live life the way I do? After all, what makes me tick is what keeps me going in life. See, there was no doubt in Paul's mind about what kept him going. In spite of all of his trials, in spite of the troubles that he faced, the tribulations, Paul was motivated by his total commitment to Jesus Christ, his Lord. In Paul's heart, there rang a melody. Here's the melody. Listen to what he said. Saved by grace through faith, and that not of myself, not of works, so that I don't boast, but of God's desire to save me and all mankind. 
so that we might become God's children who would glorify him and enjoy fellowship with him forever. God's desire ought to be my desire. God's desire ought to be the desire of all Christians. A heartfelt desire that moves you and me to pray that all sinners might be saved. So what I think Paul is basically saying is, let me set the record straight. What Paul wanted to do in our scripture passage today, he sets the record straight. Paul's, Paul admires the zeal of the Israelites, and he tells them so. He compliments them on their intent to please God. But it goes so far, it goes to the extent that they went overboard seeking to establish righteousness in ways that meant giving glory to themselves rather than glory to God. Now, we can all admit that there are probably those times when when we were tempted to get caught up in that same type of self-acclaimed scenario. And if, if we weren't exalting ourselves in one way or another, maybe we were exalting someone else, someone we admire. We admired their timeless or their tireless energy, their generous giving, their unwavering support for the cause that is before them. Paul knew that although religious activity might have served a purpose for a brief period of time, might have met a need for a moment to become so fixed that it became legalistic and thought to be an end in itself and of itself would be a costly mistake. He says they had a misguided zeal that could harden their hearts and cause them to miss the mark of God's righteousness. I was um, reading Eugene Peterson. I was reading the message. Um, has an interesting paraphrase of, of this uh, section. Listen to what it says. They don't seem to realize that this comprehensive setting things right that is true salvation is God's business and a most flourishing business it is. But right across the street, they set up their own salvation shops and noisily hawk their wares. And after all of these years of refusing to deal with God on his terms, insisting instead on making their own deals, they have nothing to show for it. Folks, any attempt of any human institution any nation, any denomination to establish its own standards of righteousness is going to fail because they're inadequate, they're incomplete. God's way through Christ is the only way to have, to possess, to receive, to be granted a right standing before God. Okay, got it, understood. God's way is the only way to salvation. So tell me how. What must we do to be saved? Paul, in a sense, says, glad that you asked. 
because the word of faith that we are proclaiming to you is as near as your mouth and your heart. Here's the way he says, the Lord God communicated his love to the world in and through his son, Jesus Christ. And God's son communicated his love to the world so that even while we were still sinners, he died on the cross to pay the penalty for the sins of the world. So now, it's time for sinners to communicate love for God and love for His Son by confessing and believing. By believing and confessing. To confess Jesus is Lord is to acknowledge our conviction of, of the truth of who Jesus is. To believe that God raised him from the dead is to accept the truth of everything that he did. Of his death, and of the power of God to raise him to life. And we make it a matter of the heart. And when we make it a matter of the heart, you set God's goal for your life as your goal for your life to become the person that God wants you to be and to do what God wants you to do. So what does God want us to be and to do? Well, God wants us to be in a right relationship with him. In my heart, in my innermost being, and to conduct my life in a godly manner. He wants me to make a public confession, saying it and showing it, giving evidence of the genuineness of my salvation. You know, that, that declaration, Jesus is Lord, was the confession of faith that the first century Christians used to identify themselves, why not continue to practice it now, here in the 21st century, and we do it in word and in deed? And, and you know what? Here's the thing, that confessing and believing, it's not a two-step process. We don't believe and then confess. The two are expressions of a single commitment. The two go together like hand and glove and that they're dependent on each other. Paul says that the Jews got it wrong in trying to establish their own standard of righteousness instead of submitting to God's standard. And he, he decides that no matter what nationality of people or in what era of history that we're talking about, God's righteousness can only be realized by believing and confessing that Jesus is Lord. In Christ alone, salvation is possible for all people. Therefore, whosoever. And as Paul finishes up our passage of scripture today, he says, everyone who believes in him will be saved. They'll never be put to shame. They will not be disappointed. 
It was Paul's desire and prayer that Israel might be saved. May it be our desire and our prayer that our loved ones might be saved, that America might be saved, that the world might be saved. We can only desire and pray that whosoever might be saved howsoever. Whether or not might becomes will is a matter of the heart of every individual on the face of the earth. So you do what God asks you to do and God will do what he has promised he will do for great and mighty is the Lord our God pray with me will you dear God Thank you for your amazing power and for your work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and for your blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times, strengthening us for your purposes. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your mercy and grace. Thank you that you are always with us and you'll never leave us. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice that, so that we might have freedom and we might have life. Lord, forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for who you are for all that you do, for all that you've given us. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you today and every day. We give you praise and thanks because you alone are worthy. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. God bless you, folks. God bless you this week as you carry on his work wherever you might be like for you to join with me in this vocal benediction led by the Pendleton Core Band. God bless you. Mm -hmm.